see if we are live. I don't remember anything. I think we're live. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it tells me that I'm live. So, guys, welcome back to Express TV. Hope you're having a great day. Um, totally improvised live stream session. So, first of all, I hope you can hear me. You should be able to. But, um, yeah, I was about to um, film a video replying some of the questions you guys leave on the comments, on the pages, on, on the various social media uh, pages of Mixbus TV. And I thought, why don't we do it live? Because I have to reply to these questions anyway. It's going to be a video anyway. And I wanted to take the chance to um, test the live again because since i left europe and i moved to los angeles i haven't for obvious reason because first of all i was working so much here and second because i i i had to get my new room and everything which i didn't yet but finally i did well <laughs> it's not this um but um the first of august i'm getting the keys of my new mixing room so here in los angeles um, it's not going to be a commercial studio. This is going to be a, a, my private studio where I work with my clients, and that's it. And of course, for everybody else uh, here in Los Angeles, especially, I have a bunch of musicians coming here, flying here to work with me. As it happened a couple of months ago with uh, Five to Ten, we um, we record and go in like commercial studios, and then we go to, to my private studio to actually do the mastering. But the point is, in my new room, I will, I will have, well, first of all, keep an eye on it because we are doing a series on my new room setup. And you're not seeing what's behind me, like on this side. <laughs> there is so much stuff in here, like so much stuff that is ready to be moved in a few days, uh, including a pair of Eve Audio SC3012 main monitors. <laughs> They're right there. They're like gigantic, like this big, piled on top, one on top of the other. Alongside, uh, there's like all my gear from Europe that I shipped here. So for those who are not familiar, this is my mobile rig. Okay, I have 40 units of hardware, hardware gear, analog gear that I still had in my studio in, um, in Europe. Uh, guys, I'm taking a look at the chat in one minute. Let me see. Okay, can I pop the chop chat? Yeah, I can. Okay, better. So I can pop the chat. All right. Oh, so hello, guys. <laughs> um, okay, let me say hi to everybody. All right, Adam, thank you. You're hearing me. Uh, Louis Lu Loud Science, hi, <laughs> old subscriber. Uh, yeah, uh, Obsidian, man, hi. Uh, yes, I was saying I'm testing this. Uh, I'm testing this because in the new room, hi, Jim, how you doing, man? In the new room, I will do more. I will go back to do uh, uh, live streams and hopefully maybe live mixing sessions. We'll see about that. But my point was that uh, there go there's going to be a, a series of video of the new build, of the new build of the new room. And it's going to be rad because thanks to a lot of companies that work with me and, and love me, um we are getting i can't say anything <laughs> but we are getting such a cool stuff for that room uh you will see i can't say anything yet but it's going to be it's going to look and be and sound one of the best room out here which says a lot well that's a that's a big fucking statement <laughs> this is los angeles uh, but yeah, this is uh, it, it's going to be great. So I can't say anything. It's gonna look absolutely fantastic. I can't wait. So I'm taking the keys in that place the first of August, and it's gonna be about a month of work. But we will film the setup, so you will you will get to see it. Um, so yeah, 
Paro, uh, I, I, I was saying this is just for me to test the live stream. You should also be able to hear Pro Tools, so let me try this. this. I don't, I don't think you do. Fortunately, not now. So this is going to be just Q and A, I guess. Uh, no Pro Tools, which is weird. I tested it before, and it was supposed to work. Maybe I have to do something. So I will reply a couple of questions that have been asked several times, specifically on a couple of subjects. One is. Um, one is um, hardware. Um, when, as a as a home studio project studio, should you buy hardware? What to get first? And one very very popular question pops up all the time is how about comparing the high end um, the high end plugins to let's say uh, a thousand bucks. Um, compressor or EQ, so a thousand bucks piece of hardware, what is best? Um, so let's try to, and of course I'm taking, I'm taking um, questions you guys want to ask while we are online. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be here for about an hour. So, <laughs> Jim, thank you so much, man. Um, all right, so let me take a look at the question. One of the first question was, what outboard should I get first? Uh, so many times. So, well, what hardware should you get first? Um, it depends really, but a good, a good answer to that uh, is probably a two bus anything, two bus anything, which could be color box, compressor, and EQ. Um, why? Because of course the two bus is where everything goes, so it has the more the most impact on your mix result wise with the the least investment, the least amount of money. And today you can get two bus compressors for super cheap. On a couple of names, you know my favorites. So drummer nineteen seventy eight, uh of course goes without saying because you know, you see me using this beast every time. You have been seeing me using it for so long. Uh, the West Audio Dion, hands down. Uh, but there's one thing to say. I, I use and like this one, and I use it like literally on every mix because I have a shitload of other piece of gear. Okay, I also have their Pultec EQ. I have the Neves for saturation. I have, it's, they're not here, but I have all the drummers. I have my distressors. I have so much stuff. Uh, what about the GSSL? The West Audio is a GSSL. The, so the West Audio, guys, is not just a GSSL, but I had the GSSL. I had the white. I, have, I had several. Um, the West Audio is better. I don't care. <laughs> What's the hype out there? It has uh, the original gold DBX VCA in it, uh, true stereo, digital recall. Uh, one, how many? One, two, three high pass filter and two um, side chain curves, the T1 and T2. There are basically the same curves that the API 2500 has. So the, the thrust, the loud, and the med. Those are here as an internal side chain. So that's what sold me on the West Audio Dion. I have a GSSL that reacts to the material like the API 2500. Hey, that's me. <laughs> and you know, I also have the 2500. So uh, definitely. Uh, I'm trying to reply all the questions, guys. So I'll get to you. Um, smack me in the head if I talk too much, because I tend to. But going back to the, to the question, what I should get first. Assuming we agree that you get one uh, piece of uh, hardware for your two bus, let's say the most common choice is a compressor, okay? Uh, well, the Tegeler Cream is also a good one, and you know I have that one too, because it has, again, a SSL VCA type uh, compressor in it, but also has a Boost Pool Tech EQ. So those are all good choices. The Drummer 1973 is amazing, 78 is amazing, 
and the drama 74 um, the EQ it's now my two bus EQ I use the West audio um, Prometheus pool tech EQ on kick and, and, and voice and vocals but yeah uh, those are a few choices as a color box if you can afford it a good one is the um, fuck me uh, the my friend uh, there you go black box <laughs> Shout out to them. Uh, the real one. Okay, the hardware. The, the plug-in is... No. Just no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, that's something. Uh, and then I will get to the other question. What about a thousand bucks compressor versus a high-end plug-in? But let me, let me get some questions from you guys. So I'll try to start from the top. Uh, uh, uh. Thank you so much, Jim. Appreciate it. Uh, Sean, you got the first tape machine. Good luck. <laughs> you couldn't, you couldn't pay me to put my hands on the tape again. Uh, oh yeah, thank you guys. What kind of tank tops do you buy? Shove your nice muscle. You know, I th I I buy them in bulk, like the cheapest that I can find, because I really don't give a fuck. <laughs> All right. Um. Oh, best preamp channel strip. Looking to get my first out outboard processor. Want to track vocals with the compression. Right. Uh, so, so many good ones. Uh, channel strip. I don't use them that much, but I would say one that is out there that it now slays is the Neve. I think the Stafford. Uh, that one or not the particle or the particle one of the two I, if if the gray one comes in channel strip version that's badass that's totally badass uh, very underrated one which they don't promote a lot is the tube tech one it's absolutely great but I would save your money for now if you trust me a little bit because rumors says that drummer should come <laughs> with a channel strip. <laughs> I didn't say anything. So uh, yeah, if you can afford it, go with a with a Neve, the Neve or the API. One of the two. Depend on what colors you like. The API is more aggressive, more rock. Good for uh, both are good for everything. There's not like at that level. There's not a genre depending thing. But um, API is more rock, more aggressive. Neve is a little more polished if you want a little slower in the transient compressor 2 is a little slower but they both sound amazing the api channel strip the neve channel strip are great the tube tech channel strip is great drummers coming out with one maybe that's what the rumor says so i would wait because drummer makes absolutely insane stuff at a ridiculous price uh i'm pretty sure i'm i'm Oh, the Empirical Lab channel strip, the Mikey, also a good choice, but I don't think he has an EQ on it. <clears throat> so, yeah, those are top of my head. I'm sure there's more. I'll get more, um, I'll study on channel strips because I don't use them. I have individual preamps, so I'll get, uh, I'll get up to date and maybe the next one. Uh, Peter, do you may know the Focusrite Green channel strip? It's fairly old. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, the Chen, the Focusrite Green was actually ex very popular, and so many people swear by it. Um, for 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 a little bit, it was a, some sort of a secret weapon. I used it once. Uh, the problem is at that time, I didn't know much about anything, <laughs> so um, I didn't pay attention to how it sounds. It just worked. It did the job. So. I was good with that, but um, would be worth res restoring? I'd say yes, especially if you find it for cheap, and you you know even if it, if it's a project, you leave it there because it's one of those units that every everyone who has been in studio for a little bit, you know, for a minute knows it, remembers it. So yeah, I would say totally yes. Um, you just got the SSL Fusion. Yeah, I, I am interested in that, in trying it. I have so much gear right now. I don't really know what to do, but yeah. Uh, uh, 
Tadze Rogers. I don't know if I'm butchering your names. Uh, well, get the tank top first. The muscle will come. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Try. Try to get the t-shirt first. You know. <laughs> Have you ever run pre-recorded tracks in an outboard preamp? Um, I'm pretty sure I did. Um, is it a thing? Not really. Mm, uh, hold on. Not true. Yes, I did. I did, actually. I did several times. I used the, the API uh, 512 to do that. And I also did when I had a couple of uh, Neve clones with the EQ in it. Uh, it is a thing, actually. No, it, it, it definitely uh, imparts a color. Um, I wouldn't run them too hot. It all depends on gain staging, but can you use them for coloring? Sure, absolutely. The concept of the passive summing is exactly that. So can you do it for single tracks? Yeah, sh why not? Uh, you can totally do it. Um, I'm not a fan of like I'm not a fan of it as a as my first reaction is I'm not a fan of it because there are so many dedicated color box today like Drummer 1976 the multiband saturator the Neves that I have a uh, bunch of like uh, the Zulu tape machine there are so many the um, lift louder than lift off makes the modules that the color dot DUI fuck is the name. Uh, so there are a lot, but if you already have preamps and you want to also use it for coloring, just go ahead. Next question. Uh, any experience with the Midas 500 preamps? No. No. I know that uh, Behringer bought it, which doesn't mean anything. But no, I haven't. I have very little experience with the Midas Live consoles, but... Uh, I'm not enough to, to you know to judge them. Just pur purchased the Focusrite Claret Eight Pre, my best investment so far. Amazing piece of gear. Uh, um, uh. Okay, uh, let's imagine we have forty-eight hertz file, but can mix in one ninety-two. There's no problem. I mean, um, if you have a foot, that was uh, that, this is actually one of the questions that I was about to reply the sample rate questions what it's best what to do how to down sample up sample so you cannot up sample if you or whoever recorded recorded at 48 hertz mm -hmm. you can import the files mm -hmm. in a 192 and it will fake up up um it will fake up sample meaning the file is just going to be bigger but the numbers are going to be empty space meaning uh, it the the quality is still gonna be a 48 hertz, but your project runs a 192. There's n absolutely no reason to do that, like no reason, because you're just at that point only adding CPU use usage, uh, because the, your files are not gonna be higher quality just because you upsample in the project. But if for some reason someone like you already have a, a project that has let's say 20 tracks at 192, and someone sends you a vocal that was recorded at 48, sure, throw them in. It will up, it will up sample. Pro Tools should do it by default, like automatically. It, nothing changes. The files are still gonna be at 48 hertz. Your project is gonna run fine. But that's about it. You can up sample. You can upgrade the quality once you record it. Once you track at 48 or 44, that's it. Okay, I thought the black box hardware was basically just software inside. No, man, the black box hardware is um, tubes and transformers. That's it. is a is a bundle <laughs> of tubes and transformers. It's got like a, a, so many in it, and all high quality. You know, uh, it's Eric, which is a friend of mine here in LA, uh, makes great. You know, it, it really takes care of you know their their products. The design is like spot on. Uh, before releasing anything, they really do research and test. No, the black box is actually as analog as it gets. There's nothing in it but just transformers and tubes. Nothing like the plugin. Okay, selling your soul to the devil will be safer than start buying analog hardware. Trust me. Uh, do you want to laugh? I just sold a bunch of uh, a bunch of hardware. Because I am shipping, I actually last week I shipped all my hardware that I had in Europe here in Los Angeles. 
and some units I sold because I uh, I have just too much hardware. Okay, so um, guess what? I made money. Um, buying hardware will cost you money if you are a newbie, you don't know what to buy, you don't know how to buy, and you start buying based on forums, you start buying all the time, so you buy and sell, you buy and sell, if you get the hype, oh this unit is amazing, and it's amazing for two weeks, and then after two weeks nobody talks about it. Buy stuff that is being out there for ages, you think API is gonna is gonna go down in price anytime soon? Nope. Distressor? Nope. <laughs> Neve preamps? Nope. Fairchild? Nope. Real pool tech? 1176 silver face? Are you, are you kidding me? <laughs> like if you know how to buy hardware, you do not lose money at worst. And if you're smart and you actually know your way around and you wait, yeah, if you buy all the crap that everybody puts out every other day just for marketing, sure you're gonna lose, lose a lot of money. You know, buy smart. Uh, companies that update their interfaces every five weeks, why do you think they do that? Because of it. So you want the next map, the next model, you lose money and you know, somebody else is buying it, you buy the new one. It, it, just don't get in the goddamn hype. I, this is something I fight every time and companies get pissed at me because just so you know. <laughs> so no, buying hardware, first of all, if you do this for a living, you buy hardware because this is your damn job. And, you know, hardware, if you started on hardware like me, makes you faster, which means you can mix more, you can, which means you can make more money. And the clients are more, are happier because you're faster. Um, they are bitch for recall, but that's why I also like the digital controlled hardware. I try to buy everything stepped like the drummer. But yeah, that's a whole different, um, different ball game so no a plain statement like that is not true buying hardware it, it's just buying everything else you know you buy you buy a new sport car and you sell it after three months yes you're gonna lose a lot of money probably who buys that car though is gonna get a great deal you know what i mean all right uh do you use the api preamp for just for tracking what about mixing with them and nips tape 500 on are on your two bus. Uh, I do use the API just for tracking because I have a lot of coloring units and, and stuff. And it's not just this, like I said, this is just a mobile thing. But you can, like I, I replied the question earlier, you can use preamps for coloring. Yes, sure, no problem. Uh, right on gears last the Behringer best compressor was the MDX2100, which was a direct clone. Yes, yeah, it's true. Um, Behringer, the old, old Behringer were clones of various designs. I'm not going into that. Uh, the, the Edison era, if you remember, there was this unit that was very popular from Behringer, the Edison, the stereo spreader thing. That era, the black and gray, most of them were direct clone, like one on one, like let's open this one up and make it the same uh, of many famous units so yeah i don't remember if that's exactly it but sh could be because there was a, there were a lot of cases like that. what is your go-to sample rate 48 uh but with that said i received most of the files that i have to mix at 44 believe it or not uh the sample rate discussion has been killed to death so many times on gear slots. yeah it's gear slots that's, that's all I'm gonna say. Adam Fox, will running at 192 make uh, 48 sounds better? No, like I said before, uh, no, no. Running at 148, a track that has been recorded uh, at 44, 88, 40, uh, 48, it won't do shit to it. The quality is not gonna change. It will still be at the same um, sample rate. It will just be a file. So imagine if this is a 192 file, uh, uh, it's full of data if you upload a 48 hertz track basically you have information up until here and then you have empty space so to speak in data terms so to speak that fills up the 122 you're just gonna make the the file size bigger not the quality so you can't up 
you upgrade the quality by importing a 44 48 track into a 192 um are you going to try to buy the new max mac dsp i have one uh there's one laying around harmony studio where i sometimes go to work um right now i'm not interested in it i have so much hardware uh hardware synthesizer or software synthesizer good question so i just got the arturia and the uvi i had for a while now i'm not a synth head or by any stretch of imagination but you know guys i'm like i know a lot of musicians that are like keyboard player and stuff uh you know some names are being on the channel too i'm not the right person to ask because for me the software synths are pretty damn amazing uh uvi or truria stuff is like i don't know i don't understand how it can get better than that and right now actually arturia is so kind because they were happy with the video they're sending me a controller which is mapped automatically with their stuff so once you have a controller like that i don't think the, the sound quality is like a bottleneck right so i'm all for synthesize for software synthesizer um and then if you miss a color if you miss anything that's mixing that's me you know that's my job so I, I never received the software synth track and I said oh wow this sounds bad if it sounded bad it was not the quality it was the choice of the sound if that makes sense I do most of my mixing via head uh, Le Levy Beats I do most of my mixing via headphones do, do not have any, uh, uh, availability to treat my room do you think the headphone software can buy this work okay so look I've been mixing on headphones probably something a, a good Ten albums throughout my career okay uh, whether I was out of my studio or I was in another country I was traveling whatever and I never needed a software uh, to calibrate my headphones what I what do I use for headphones let me show you everybody knows but I'm gonna show you anyway so I have these ones there are my trusty Sennheiser uh the hd 600 and if those are too expensive i use the status audio cb01 i think they're called they're 50 bucks and hold on i have a mess here and they are absolutely great to check the the both are well, well the sunizer are standard but the C, the, the, um, I just said the name and forgot, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the, the status audio are absolutely amazing for checking the low end. So uh, I have, I, my, my advice would be get an open set of headphones like the Sennheiser. There are cheaper models and a closed one, okay? Because the low end, there's a big, big difference in, in low end with the, with the two different kinds. So have both. I also use a pair of like $15 Sony MD2 something, I think. But I wouldn't advise, I use them just because I know them so well. So they're nothing special. Um, yeah, those are the, my two headphones. I don't, I never needed a software, but I also been doing this for 15 years. Could, could it be useful? Uh, maybe, maybe. It, it only it's a matter like with headphones you only you only need to get used to it you only have to mix on headphones consistently and then even when you have a room or you are in a room you just double check your headphones with what you hear in the room and so you get a feeling of how a mix changes when you mix it in in your in your headphones as opposed to a good room so yeah, a couple of trips in the car in in a good room. Just double check. Then, with time and experience, you'll get used to how your headphone sounds, and you will be able to. I did not mix on headphones for the first probably six, seven years of my career. So, just but can it be can it be done? Yes. Do you need a software? I never used one, so I don't know. Maybe. Uh, next one. Oh wow. A lot of questions. Do you see my question above about your sample pack? No, sorry, I haven't. My sample pack. Uh, let me see if I can see the question. 
s regarding your nuke sa s nuked snares, is there a transient? Is is there a transient getting through the comp? Where are those sample picking? How many dB? So the samples, if you bought the the pack, it's exactly how a track looks when you engage the distressor in nuke mode and you the settings were the settings that I like. So I like the transient pass and I squashed the tail. That's why you get that snap that is so spiky, okay? Um, you need to know how to mix that then, but you can, for example, get away with a lot of uh, saturation on that transient to tame the limit, the nominal level, but that's why it's so high. It's just the sound of it. And again, we go back to the game staging. Don't be worried, don't be scared about that it's almost like full scale. You know, gain stage things so that you know you flip. But yeah, that's why when you engage the the distressors in nuke mode, you leave the attack. In my case, the it was about five. The transient pass and, and very very snappy. We are talking about my new uh, sample pack, the um, um, power snares of doom <laughs> that is out there, seven bucks only. It's like fifty snare sample, fifty like power snare hit samples processed with the stressors in nuke mode and the OS audio. Um, let's more questions. Okay, so I'm gonna be here for another 30 minutes, like 20 minutes. So let's try to get all the questions. So many. Uh, having tr uh, just joined, I would have heard of my mix bus would be the first choice. Well, if N NB beats, I, I answered this, that question at the beginning of the live there's going to be a replay so you can go like back and see that otherwise i'm repeating the same stuff having trouble placing overhead stereo mics on drum and keeping the snare in the middle because it's so far on the left uh move the mics if you i have a recording drums course on promix academy exactly because of that so people place the microphones they okay so this is the drum kit what can i get <laughs> So this is, uh, this is the drum kit, okay? And the snare is here on the left, all right? So people just place the mics left and right, cutting the kit at the, at the middle of the kick drum. Why? You know, just position the mic, get a, get a string or a cable, put the strings, it's shown in my course, in my video course. You, you place the cable in the center of the snare and you pull one, one side on the left, microphone and then when you when you had the measure you just move it this way and you and you position the second mic so you have the mics at the same distance from the snare okay uh it's actually a little more complicated than that because the the cable goes to the kick drum first you keep the cable uh, um in place with the with the beater then you go up you you move it you move it to the to the mic um from the mic to the snare, and then you move this part around to measure the other, the other mic. But yeah, that's I hate the asymmetrical snare too on hoverhead. That's why I came up with this technique. So you you always have kick and snare perfectly at the center. Also, another thing: most people divide the kit this way. So again, if this is the kit, if this is the drum kit, people divide it like this. Okay, I like to divide the kit, so one, one mic here and one mic here. I like to divide the kit this way, diagonally. So you have one mic here and one mic here. This way, for me, it gives me the same stereo um, opening than the spaced pair, because it's still spaced pair, spaced pair, but it's easier to position kick and snare in the center. And yeah, again, check out the course. It's, there's this and a lot more on recording drums. And I did the course with Matt Starr, which is drummer for Ace Fraley, KISS. So yeah, he gives a couple of tips too in the, in the course. It's awesome. Have you used SSL Fusion? No, but I would like to because it looks interesting. Uh, I think it's a solid unit on paper. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, it's a solid unit on paper. I, I hope uh, it sounds as good as it seems because that would be a, a unit that I would stand by, stand by. yeah, for sure. It's, it, it, looks, it looks good. Uh, I see if I can get one here in LA, you know. As a sale, guys, where are you? Stand one. These guys want to see how it sounds. <laughs> Having trouble, okay. 
Um, did you see? Yeah, I did. Arturia. Yeah, Art Arturia is it made like good, good stuff. Wow, so many questions, guys. I don't think I'm going to be able to answer all of them. Sorry. Uh, John, hi, man. Can you compete with professional ma mix and mastering using plugins? Yeah, I just did it last week. I do releases. I do mixes and masters for official releases in the box all the time. I use hardware because I like it because I'm f because I'm faster with it. Uh, but there's there's no it's not a question anymore, guys. It is not a question anymore. Can you do it with plugins? One hundred percent. Takes more? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it will sound the same? No, because plugins are not hardware. They will sound different. It will sound different doesn't mean it will sound worse. But absolutely, you can. OK. Uh, did you buy hardware with the money from your role in Triple X? Yes. And I'm actually, so it's, it's Phil uh, IPP is asking, did you buy all the hardware with the money from your role in Triple X? Actually, yes. And I'm hoping that either Universal or 20th Century Fox call me for the uh, next chapter in the movie series because uh, I could use the money. So um, yeah, give, give Universal Movies and 20th Century Fox a shout out and tell, tell them to call me. Um, can you compete? OK, let's go. I keep coming with the stupid questions, guys, because I, I can stay here all day just replying stupid questions. <laughs> this, this is like, so go ahead. Don't worry about it. Look at Andrew Sheps and Jess and Jamie works. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Andrew, which is, again, amazing engineer. They work 100% in the box. I'm not an amazing engineer like them, but I do too. And yeah, headphone stock. I always hated this to this moment. Nice take on that topic. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Diego from Panama. Love you too. What's your biggest pet mixing pet peeve? Addictive mixing over compression too loud. Uh, wrong arrangement. I know it's not exactly that, but when you have a shitty arrangement, you just can't mix it. Just everything just, it doesn't fit. But um, try to reply other than that is, uh, yeah, I think it's just this. When, when the, the, the source sound are they just don't glue, there's only so much you can do in mixing. Other than that, I don't find anything that is for me too hard or a pet peeve in mix at this point. It's just when the sounds are not, like the source sounds are not there, maybe for so many reasons, you know. Um, my, big, my biggest pet peeve is probably Pro Tools. <laughs> and it's weird limitation here and there, you know, compared to other, to other um, DAWs, which, by the way, I'm going to try Nuendo and show you guys. I will try to open Pro Tools project in Nuendo because apparently it can do it. So we'll take a look at it. Nuendo 10. Um, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll try. What's your favorite metal guitar amp? Uh, um, PV, uh, um, the 5150. Uh, I had my, my amp head was the, um, the, the 7550 plus. Uh, so anyway, that, uh, that one, that's my f favorite metal guitar amp. The second one would be the Ubershaw. The Framus Cobra, I in love that. And if I have to produce a metal band, I do want a Meza there just to have it, just in case, just to stack it. But yeah, um, PV, the 65 plus, the 5150, it's my favorite. Uh, Ubershall and Framus Cobra being head to head. <laughs> Framus Cobra for down tuning all day. What do you think about DUI hardware packages sold online? I have zero experience with that. I know a lot of people may, uh, get great, great deal, great, great piece of hardware if they can build in themselves. Uh, the problem with that is resale value. It's got basically no resale value. So if you do it, do it for yourself, literally, to keep it. 
because yeah that's that's not if you if you if you were to resell that it's you're not gonna get anything analog sounds way better than me in general for the most times um yeah uh i don't know it's just too blank of a statement i ha i can think of some plugins that i could not mix without you know um tokyo don't lab nova nova how do you do that with the hardware well you're gonna get a mazalek mastering you know a plugin uh, a compressor four bands and you're gonna get like 10 of them <laughs> you can't so there's some things like de or delays echo boy like no there's some analog sounds better when you go into compression some of them as in hardware compressor like this why do i have distress why do i have four distressors you see two here there are two over there in the boxes because that sounds it's just that sound and why do i use the west audio diode because there's no ssl like sounds like that especially plug-in so it's you know it would be like for the why do you get a pv instead of like you know because it has that sound it's not better or worse but for saturation yeah we are like i don't know it's it's weird the hardware is a cumulative effect when you go and a b a plugin with a piece of hardware is always gonna is, is always gonna lose the, the plugin is always gonna lose because it's a matter of while you mix you adjust to what you have that's the key of it you know it's not like when you go a b one to one it, they're always gonna lose it's the hardware is more exciting it's faster it reacts to the material in a different way uh, plugins are static and yeah it's it, it just it, it's just that when you're a professional mix engineer you mix with plugins you only have plugins believe me if you if you got balls if you know what you what you do you are going to adjust oh boy what time is it i got 10 minutes i'm trying to answer questions uh why when centering your kick in obsidian when centering your kick in the spaced pair what head are you ref referencing uh beater Better, sorry. Better head always, um, because on on the resonance you probably have one mic in, one mic out. You have a tunnel, so there's a lot going on. You want that fast transient to be aligned. Everything else you're gonna adjust and mix. Do you make masters diff masters different based on sites that will distribute them? Yes, I make CD plays, streaming plays, TV. TV shows, I made that one for Bella right now. So uh, CD Play, uh, which is uh, actually, hold on. CD Play, Club Play, which is stupid loud. Uh, streaming, which is lower. Uh, TV, which is without the lead vocal or whatever. And uh, that's it, four, I think. Unless they require some other, some other, oh, high quality. I make high quality. So I print 24 bit high quality. And I also, have the unmastered mix. Do you make uh, what EQ and compressor do you always level match or you just go with the flow? Or what? No, always, 100%. Uh, when I set the compression, okay? So when I use EQ and compression, I always level match. And then if I want to use the makeup gain of a compressor to, as, as it would be a fader, because I like the color, that's a different thing. But in order to understand if when if your the moves that you did with your EQ or, or your compressor are making the material better, unless you level match, you are just fooling yourself. Always level match. Uh, is is there are cats around? Yeah, one is there. One is there. Arrangement. Someone someone said yeah, exactly. The mixing will the mixing by will fix it. Have you tried Studio One? Nope. Uh, another nice cat. Yes, we got three here. Three cats. They are rescue cats. So uh, it's Tesla, Oreo, and Minerva. And um, uh, yeah, we rescue animals when we can. So if you can help out, you know, if you have a shelter near you, uh, there's a lot of dogs and cats out there that get treated like absolute fucking shit. And I have zero respect for human beings that mistreat han animals um i'll i'll go to jail <laughs> if i would see someone mistreat an animal 
So, um, yeah. I hope you guys, you know, if you can, when you can, just help out. All shelters, especially small shelters, always need help. Just go to the store, buy five, you know, bags of big bags of food, take them to them. Uh, they will appreciate. You know, if you're going, if you have like half day free, just go help out. So, yeah, be kind to animals. Or, you know. All right, anyway. Uh, do you have any recommendation for a hardware processor like uh, for like Drum Master? Uh, thanks for the okay, Jordi. Uh, drums. Uh, well, I like uh, several things for drums. The Drummer 1978 is great for drums. The API 2500 is great for drums. Uh, secret weapon that I just met the CEO a few days ago. The Levelor, the 500 series Levelor. You want that for drums. <laughs> it's great. It's absolutely great. In general, you want on, on drums, you want like either a VCA snappy thing or uh, a FET with saturation. Uh, the Neve, the, I don't remember the name, but the, the new Stafford, I think it's called. Uh, the diode compressor they have, that's great on drum. For EQ, Pultec is always a good choice. Uh, full parametric is a, always a good choice, like hardware, like the 1974 is great for drums. Uh, any kind of saturation for drums is great. Uh, exciters, I'm, I'm thinking about something. Um, what, what are, well, distressors, of course, the Fatso, of course, for drums. Uh, these things you don't use on master aside from maybe a VCA compressor. So the two are different. I, t I talked about the master uh, two bus com processor, the possible at the beginning of the live stream. Uh, there's gonna be a replay so you can watch that. But uh, EQ wise for drums, API 5, 550 are great. Uh, like, again, I repeat the level or is like crazy good. Uh, what else? Can't think of anything right now. Do you think Pro Tools will remain the industry standard in the coming years as more people move to other doors? I think we are very, very far from Pro Tools uh, not being the industry standard. Uh, it's going to be a little more diverse, for sure. But generally speaking, we are far from that for a, for a, for a while, at least. Pro Tools will remain in. Uh, with that said, I know a lot of people that use two, two DAWs, and they just have Pro Tools for compatibility thing. But like I said before, um, I just installed Nuendo. I'm going to try it, see how that goes. I actually started with Nuendo. Go figure. Uh, OK, I uh, will watch the drum course just real quick. If the overheads on the left are around the snare, then what? What, how should I cover the symbols on the right? Uh, I'm not getting the question. If the, dr if the left, if the hoverheads are on the left around the snare, no, 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 it's one mic is, so basically if this cup is the snare, okay, can you see it? You don't put the microphones like this so that this one is closer, you just put them like this. Make sense? You just move them both. Uh, adjust the kit if so adjust the kit if the the microphone should have a wide enough pattern to catch the the right symbols okay it's a matter of how you you know, how you um, tilt it also and the pattern don't get like a hyper cardioid um, microphone uh, I never had a problem that's moving the mics and not catching what's in here or worst case scenario, just add one symbol mic on the symbol that you miss on the right side, which is usually the ride. Is usually people mic that, so yeah, you can do that. Uh, so wow, okay, a lot of uh, okay. Uh, let me let me see. Perceived volume based on DBF D, DBF scale, maybe both. Perceived volume. Uh, 
Well, DBFS scale, you only use it to measure like your levels in your DAW. Nobody's gonna see that. So it's always perceived level. Is that DBF, DBFS only serves the engineer to have data, okay? Uh, it's always perceived volume, always perceived. The problem is to have a good monitoring system, system environment in which you can actually gauge the perceived level well. Uh, do you ever mix with pedals in your DAW? Yes. <laughs> and these are only two of them. I have a full box of them. I have a uh, rat, both the vintage and the new one. Um, the mini tube screamer, occult pedal, a whole bunch of occult pedal. I have what I have. Um, um, a, a, a Vintec something. Uh, yeah, I have something like 10 pedals and I mix vocals, drums, bass, synths. Those are usually my go-to. And in almost all my mixes, I have at least a couple of tracks in which that I did reamp um, in pedals. Always, I love it. And this one is dirty little secret. Do you ever mix uh, master nieces? You just make it loud with the L2, right? Right. <laughs> How did you learn your frequencies? Train your ears which means listen a lot of music in the same environment so you have a constant reference and when you EQ if you want if you want if you're learning don't sweep don't 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 sweep left and right if you hear so this is a trick if you hear a resonance that is bothering you don't look at like turn off the analyzer and um if you think is around 200 or 250 or 300 just grab that knob, just grab that um, frequency point that you think is the frequency, the offending frequency, and turn it up. If it's not, don't don't sweep left and right. Put it down and try another one. And you, if you do this enough, you will catch. You will almost develop like you know, oh, that's 280. Okay. I purchased your tutorial on Produce Like a Pro. It was really good. I learned that you're going to make any more tutorials. John 415, there, uh, I guess you're talking about the hip hop. Thank you. I'm very happy that was a bestseller. Uh, regardless the genre, you should probably get that a go. If you don't like it, I will refund you because <laughs> uh, there's a lot went into that hip hop mix. So regardless the genre, is, you should learn a lot. Um, yes, there's a recording drum course already out but this Friday is coming out my new course which is on alternative metal recorded a full band so drums bass two guitars singer we recorded a barefoot recording here in Los Angeles uh, and the, again the whole mix the whole mastering the whole editing part two we ended up with 96 tracks of guitars just to give you an example there's the whole recording process with three amps uh, three, four mics each cabinet, uh, a clean line, a DI line, all this a barefoot recording on the big board console. That course is badass. And again, regardless of the genre, you're gonna learn a lot. I can promise you that I don't put out things if I'm not confident in that. Uh, do you keep the studio smelling good with the cats? A lot of um, um, deodorants and shit. <laughs> but um, this is, like, like I said at the beginning, I'm moving. So I'm moving like literally in uh, 10, uh, 12 days. <laughs> so in the new room, they're not, like the cats are not allowed. But yeah, it's fine, they're, they're out all the time. Uh, do you level match? Okay, so well said. Love the animals, pay attention to metering when you gain matching or you just do it by ear, both. Um, I usually get away with just monitoring, but I do take a look at the level. Just join, should you think about them? Uh, why are you talking about cats, dogs instead of gear? Well, yeah, because someone asked me about the cats and I said that they were rescued. What about Git reamping? It is better. It is a choice. I did it so many times. There's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't sound the same as playing just because the player doesn't react to the amp, but there's no, it's not better or worse. Like sound wise, if you reamp and you set the amp, it's it's good that you're you're as good as recording live um obsidian <laughs> uh be kind to animals yeah, yeah exactly 
So uh, what are your DAC and AC and, and so my converters? So basically I have the Motu uh, pre-ES, I have 24 channels of SSL, which are in the box right now, and I also have a crane sawn head for the mastering part. So that, that, those are my, my converters. Uh, and I like the head and the Motu better than anything, better than the SSL. Adding sat saturation during mixing. Uh, sure, we should, I mean, I'm probably the one who has the most <laughs> material out on saturation. I am responsible for people talking about saturation out there. <laughs> but yeah, I can do it. Uh, I don't know, maybe when, when we have the new room, we'll can, we can set up a, a mixing session or something. Yeah, saturation during mixing, I'll do that. Favorite trends in Shaper to try the mastering in the mix punch? Um, no, I didn't, but I know the Transpire, that is one of the free plugins that I featured in one of my videos, is great. I like very much the SPL, Transient Designer. And what else? Oh, there's one uh, very good one, and so fucking underrated, is the um, Waves Trans X Multiband. It's, I know it's old, I know there's a, there are other multibands, like more yay, that's, I mixed MC Solar with that thing. When the vocals, there was a couple of parts, there was too harsh, I tried everything. I tried DSers manually automating all, anything you can think of. I throw that thing in, vocals was smooth. Go figure, double platinum, album on the year 2018. <laughs> Lead vocal. By the way, um, what are your slowest compression settings you use often? Attack and release. I like slow attacks in compressors. Uh, I don't use compressors as limiter. I made a video out of it. You don't use a compressor uh, as a break wall limiter. Okay? <laughs> Thank you, Peter. <laughs> cat food. Yeah. Right on, man. Um, the cats. Thank you. Um, I don't use, I don't like um, fast attack on compressors. I use, I use compressor, my way to use compressors is to slap you in the face. So let the transient pass and pinch down the rest so the effect of the transient is amplified. So I don't like um, fast attack. So my slowest are, I go up to 30, easy. So if you think about it, it's even one standard settings on the wa waves, uh, <laughs> waves, my ass. On the Wes Audio Dion DSSL, you know, the 10 and 30 for two bus mixing, for two bus compression, are the most used for a reason. Um, with the distressor, I like again, I, with the distressor, I go a little faster, but the slowest I can get is probably around seven on the distressors. And um, on the 1176, I'm basically three quarters slow which is still super fast. The release, release it, 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 it depends. It can, sometimes on vocals, it can be very, very slow. You know, if you want to avoid to, uh, if, it's, if it's a ballad and you want to avoid like breaths and stuff uh, to come out, if you, the compressor is like triggering too much and reacting too abruptly, it can be slow. Um, even on snare, if you take a look at my nuked new the Power Snare or Doom <laughs> sample pack, the the um, release is fairly slow because you want the the tail of the snare to breathe, you know, and just give you that effect. It's all about so compressor compressors are compressor people say compressor are used to control dynamics. It's true. Compressors first and foremost are used to change the envelope. So the attack and the sorry the attack and decay of a of a of a waveform of a sound, okay. Maybe we can do a video on that. The controlling dynamics, as in macro dynamics, is one function. But before that, there's the change of an envelope. That's what compressor do. That's why people find so hard to understand compression. Compression. Um, Long-term events, yes, but the reason to use a compressor is to change the envelope in short-term events. Uh, take a course before the end of the year. Are you afraid that you're moving? I'll take that course before the end of the year. Thank you, Sean. Are you afraid that after the moving you will have a different room you will take down? 
Uh, no, I'm not worried at all because that room is gonna sound amazing. I have companies backing me up, helping me out. It's gonna sound great. And I have <laughs> Eve Audio 3012 main monitors, <laughs> which is great, but aside of that, um, I, I'm bringing my Genelex, I'm bringing my little GPL. Uh, it will take a couple of days, no more for me to adjust. I've been, look, since October, I've been mixing uh, Echo Bar, I've been mixing a rec uh, Barefoot Recording, I've been mixing at, at Harmony Studio, I've been mixing so many places, I've been mixing here, I've been mixing so many places. When you do this for as long as I can, uh, have, it really takes you like 15 minutes, you bring your tracks, you listen, if the track, if the room is, is okay, and you know where to go. So, no, I'm not. I'm actually very excited because it's probably gonna be one of the best sounding room uh, that I've that I've been in, aside stupidly big and expensive studio. Do the Neve 542 change your stereo field in any way? Nope. <clears throat> well, no. There are two mono units, but also most gear is dual mono. The master bus of a console is dual mono. So, to some extent, yes. In a, in a problematic way, as in your mono kick is gonna be like split or out of phase or unbalanced, no. Also because you can, if you, well, you can't see, but you need to trust me. I never touch the input, it's always at zero, which is dented. So uh, the input is like, is coming from Pro Tools at Unity, that's why I keep everything at Unity, that's why I break my neck trying to teach people game staging is damn everything. Um, where did you get that cool artwork you have on the wall behind you? I think it was Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where I can purchase your new tutorial coming on Friday Rock, uh, John 415, uh, promixacademy.com. I'm going to try the no, oh, what? I'm going to try the no sweeping suggestion. Thanks, man. Thanks for everything. Guys, I'm about to go. So, ah, uh, so many questions. Asking on the level of vocals is good with music, hard to get me. Uh, yeah, Anas Ali, vocal level compared to the music. Monitor are super, super low levels. As in, if you type your keyboard, okay, like this, it needs to be that level, that low. In that way, you can, you can understand right away if the vocals is too loud, you're gonna hear just that. If it's too low, you're not gonna hear it at all. Just monitor very, very low in volume. Gladius, just want to say hi, hi man. Um, uh, Pager, what, um, and with changing the envelope, they change the rhythm and group. Yes, exactly, they change the feel. Talking about compressor changing the envelope with and gear. What? And gear. Sorry, I butchered your name. I do take take Flight Music Studio. I do mix into my two bus from the beginning with Neve 542s, West Audio Dion, and Drummer 1974 Stereo Parametric EQ from the beginning. Yeah, he mix into it. Yeah. Do you prefer recording record artists one by one or all together in the same session? If the musicians have feeling. Uh, I do love to record. I actually want to do a video on that. I want to record a rock or metal band in one room because I did it years ago for a TV show and I thought, oh my God, this is gonna be a nightmare. And instead the mixes were like, the raw mixes were like amazing. Like, wow, well, <laughs> they were good. Okay, I'm not, you know, I don't wanna be too <laughs> cocky, but I was very surprised. So uh, I do prefer recording musicians together if I can. Yes, if they can. It's definitely, definitely cool. And it has a completely different vibe. Completely different vibe. I was reminded of that when, when I did those shows for that TV. Uh, if I can manage, I promise you guys, we will try to set it up. Like I get a band and we will record in one room and see what it, like, how it goes. What about one second release on a comp? Seems very long to me, but... Do you use it? One second is very long. I can't imagine anything but like either soundtrack type or classic music for a release that long. You ever master into a limiter comp in the early stages? Yes, I always ma mix with uh, my compressor on uh, from the, from the get-go. Limiter, no. Limiter and compressor are two different things. Okay, Limiter is a brick wall limiter, zero attack, it chops off 
um, transient, the compressor is not supposed to be used in that way. When I mix into my uh, SSL uh, West Audio Dion, my attack is a 30 milliseconds or 10 at fast, if it's fast. Okay. Uh, wrap, let's wrap it up. <laughs> All right, guys, Jim, Sean, everybody, Obsidian, thank you, guys. I gotta go. See you next time. Subscribe. Check the info box down below for all that links and shit. <laughs> thank you for watching. Bye.